This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for October 3, 2023, another student hospitalized after allegedly stepping on schoolmates' shoes. Another student was reportedly beaten until she was unconscious on Monday by about six female students after she was accused of stepping on one of the girls' shoes. The news understands that the incident occurred approximately 2.30 p.m. after the Steertown Academy was dismissed. The victim is said to be a 13-year-old grade 7 student. According to Senior Superintendent of Police Dwight Powell, the information that we have suggests that Sometime about 8 on the said morning, the victim allegedly stepped on the shoe of one of the persons that assaulted her. The person that assaulted her indicated that she would deal with her case after school concluded. On the conclusion of class around 2.30 p.m., she was set upon by six students of the said school who physically assaulted her. She was rendered unconscious and taken to the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital where she was treated and revived. The police were informed of this incident and immediately commenced its investigation. We will be collaborating with the school with a view to see how best we can treat this matter in an appropriate way. We are appealing to the students involved to make themselves available for the investigation to continue, SSB Powell added. Last Thursday, grade 8 student of B.B. Coke High School in St. Elizabeth, Jaheem Coleman, was beaten unconscious by a grade 11 student after he allegedly stepped on his clerk's shoes. That student was later charged with assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. Six of 15 Klansman gangsters sentenced, remaining nine to no punishment today. The infamous Klansman gang operated with a culture of impunity under the leadership of a man who had no qualms about the killing again and again and again. Trial Judge Chief Justice Brian Sykes said on Monday, as he handed down a combined 76 years of prison sentences to six of the 15 convicted. However, Dylan McLean, one of the six ahead of being carted out to serve his seven years and the three months for the offenses of being part of a criminal organization and the two counts of facilitating the commission of a serious offense by a criminal organization, was overheard as scoffing at the assertions of the trial judge. These shackles can't hold me. Me still young, you know. The 27-year-old McLean, who is said to be suffering from a mental condition and has been placed on suicide watch, declared disdainfully to no one in particular during one of several court breaks. When prompted to repeat his words, McLean did so without hesitation before clamming up. The remaining nine convicts should all be handed their sentences today. Justice Sykes, during his sentencing address, said that based on the evidence disclosed in the case, the convicts would have continued with their criminal conduct outside of their arrest and his decision to impose a custodial sentences stemmed from the fact that there was nothing to indicate that the individuals had any intention to abandon a life of crime. In sentencing convicted gang leader Andre Blackman Brown to 39 and a half years behind bars, the Chief Justice said the 38-year-old Brown, who was convicted for leadership of the criminal gang, and seven other counts which involved facilitating serious offenses such as murder and arson between 2015 and 2019 was the prime mover and architect responsible for at least the five deaths that resulted from shootings and arson ordered by him. The cumulative evidence of the indicted counts as well as the unindicted clearly shows that Mr. Bryan was the leader of the organization, Justice Sykes has said. Noting that the killings were in instances carried out in daylight, the trial judge in referencing an attack in the fisheries area of St. Catherine said that there was no evidence anyone was wearing a mask. It is a culture of impunity. I can shoot anywhere, anytime, day or night, it doesn't matter. In assessing Brian's role as a leader of the gang, the chief justice said the evidence showed that Brian did not intend to give up his life of crime. Brian, during the pronouncement, doubled over, grasping his stomach before sitting up. The Klansman leader, who would have been first to be sentenced, based on the fact that he was named the first on the indictment, ended up being sentenced the second, 
after he complained of physical discomfort and was removed from the courtroom for several minutes. Justice Sachs, in pointing out that violence was a consistent part of how the gang conducted its affairs, said that the sentence now has to disable Mr. Bryan from being able to conduct this kind of activity for an extended period of time. What the evidence shows is that Mr. Bryan was a man of extreme violence who was not afraid of having people killed again and again and again, the trial judge declared. Justice Sachs, in handing down the 39 and a half years a sentence to Brian, said it was clear that the acts were premeditated and pre-planned. Brian, clad in a slate gray shirt and a slate gray strapped pants, for most of the hearing held his head down. Following his sentencing, he walked from the dock without a backward look, his face expressionless. Along with Brian and McLean, convicted gangsters Tom Rick Taylor, Michael Whiteley, Brian Morris and Lamar Simpson, were sentenced to nine and a half years, 16 years, 18 years and six months, and one year and six months respectively. When the matter resumes today, the remaining convicts, namely Stephanie Momo Cole Christie, Ted Prince, Jazeel Blake, Andre Golding, Tarika James, Joseph McDermott, Fabian Johnson, Roel Taylor and Jermaine Robinson, are expected to receive their sentences. The convicted gangsters were all tried under the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Act 2014. The act in the second schedule indicated that, in relation to a conviction on indictment in a circuit court for the offense of leadership, management, or direction of a criminal organization, the sentence is to be imprisonment for a term not exceeding 30 years. For a conviction in relation to membership of a criminal organization, the schedule provides that, for a first offense, imprisonment should be for a term not exceeding 20 years. There is no mandatory minimum sentence in relation to either of the offenses. The Crown, in opening its case on September 20, 2021, with an initial 33 accused on trial, had said that the individuals comprised the Blackman faction of the St. Catherine-based gang and had various roles in which they acted as killers, drivers, lookout men or watchmen, gunsmiths and the foot soldiers. Women under the gun in bloody start to October The month of October began exactly as the September ended, with women being murdered by the gun and in multiples. Yesterday, breakfast services, usually catered by a mother and a daughter duo, on the outskirts of the National Solid Waste Management Authority's Spanish Town Road offices, did not reach their intended and usual customers after the women were murdered before the start of business. They have been identified as Sophia Drummond, an employee of the NSWMA, and her daughter, Dominique Duhaney. Police said the two were ambushed and shot by gunmen about 5.10 a.m. They died on the spot. The investigators say they are probing several avenues to arrive at a possible motive. The news understands that all was perhaps not well with Drummond at her workplace and she was very vocal about it, even using her social media account to air her grouses in a series of posts. On June 16, she wrote, Too much politics at the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Then a day later, she wrote, Why should my political affiliation affect my job? MPM is now a political arena, asylum. MPM, or Metropolitan Parks and Markets Waste Management Limited, is a regional branch of the NSWMA, which services the corporate area. Drummond, who was reportedly being employed to the NSWMA for more than two decades, suggested that she was being victimized for her political affiliation. I've been at mom for over 20 years for working in the office to route coordinator, to team leader to the office again. Now I'm supposed to go sit at the Riverton City Dump due to politics, and there's no one to speak to because I'm a PNP supporter. This country is doomed, she also posted on June 17. The news visited the Norman Gardens community in East Kingston, where the two lived together. However, neighbors, while in shock, were tight-lipped. NSWMA Executive Director Audley Gordon confirmed that one of the victims was employed to the agency. Operators were affected by the incident, and Gordon said that while the agency wanted to continue its work, efforts are focused on supporting traumatized staff. We don't believe, and we have no reason to believe, that this is an attack on the NSWMA staff in general. So we want everyone to remain calm, he said. Other divisions were far from calm, 
as several other women were reportedly murdered in the last 24 hours. Investigators in the St. Andrew Central Police Division are probing the murder of 31-year-old Anika Walters, daughter of PNP Councillor Candidate for the Admiral Town Division, Louise Pumbles in Newland. Another man was also shot in the incident, which took place about 10.45 p.m. Sunday on Orange Street in the vicinity of Orange Villa. In the St. Catherine North Police Division, two Higglers were executed early Monday. Police say a woman and a man, believed to be vendors at the Coronation Market, were killed behind a bus stop. Residents heard explosions sometime after 3 a.m., but the bodies were not found until sometime after 7 a.m. yesterday. Meanwhile, for the last week of September, the nation was rocked by a series of acts of violence against the women, with a series of murders, including a quadruple murder involving three women. On September 23, a woman who reportedly visited the island for a funeral was killed at the Midwest Memorial Gardens. She was not immediately identified. On September 26, Karen Higgins, Dorothy Higgins, and Dan Johnson were murdered in Crawl District, Riversdale in St. Catherine. A man known only as Junior was killed in that incident. Last Friday, Audrey Hines, former president of the Craft Market Association, was shot dead at the Kingston Craft Market. The news was told that the lone gunman approached and asked for her by name before she was shot repeatedly. On Saturday, the last day of September, a Grand Spen woman, a teacher in training, was abducted and taken to an area in the St. Andrew South Police Division where she was shot in the head and left for dead. She remains hospitalized. The news repeatedly requested from the Jamaica Constabulary Force data on the total number of women murdered in 2022 to no avail. As of midnight last Thursday, data obtained by the news shows that 1,031 murders were recorded nationally since the start of the year. This represents a 12% reduction year on year. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.